And who will ride with me? Who will be my brother? Kristen Stewart is an American actress who gained worldwide fame thanks to the Twilight franchise. At the same time, she cannot be exactly called a hostage to one role. Through her participation in independent projects, she has won the recognition of the professional community and regularly receives prestigious nominations and awards. Watch our video to learn how she reached this point. Kristen Stewart from Twilight Hate to Oscar nomination Kristen James Stewart was born on April 9, 1990 in Los Angeles, California, and has been associated with the entertainment industry since childhood. Her father, John Stewart, was an assistant director and then a producer of entertainment shows at Fox TV. Her mother, Jules Mann, also worked as a script editor on television. Kristen grew up on TV sets. For her, it was like a summer camp. When the camera crew got together, the girl imagined that they were a gang of pirates standing guard over untold treasures. She didn't have a goal to become an actress, but she really wanted to become part of this gang. At home, Kristen was already in the gang. She grew up with three brothers, Cameron, four years older, and two adopted brothers, Taylor and Dana. Besides, the Stewart family helped Cameron's friends so their house was always full of boys. The actress said that until the age of 15, she often wore her brother's clothes, which definitely influenced her signature tomboy style. However, the informal style has always been inherent in her parents, so the lack of strict boundaries is their family thing. In elementary school, Kristen made her debut in a Christmas production and since then has been studying in a club. Seeing her daughter's interest in acting, her parents invited a Hollywood agent friend to one of the plays she was in, and as a result, in 1999, the girl was invited to a Disney Channel project called The Thirteenth Year. Stewart's role was very tiny, but she liked the process so much that she demanded that her parents take her to auditions, any auditions, just to avoid going to school and gradually getting closer to the world of cinema. She also starred in commercials. For example, in one of the videos, she played a cunning girl who misses the school bus day after day to make her dad drive her there in his Porsche 911. However, after one audition, where children with dimples on their cheeks and huge smiles had to pretend to twirl and dance even though there was no music, Kristen decided it wasn't her thing. Fortunately, her mother persuaded her to go to at least one more casting for a role in the independent film The Safety of Objects. Nine-year-old Stewart got the role. Soon, Kristen got into the cast of a major Hollywood project, David Fincher's movie Panic Room. What happens if you don't get it? The thriller, in which the young actress co-starred with Jodie Foster, was released in 2002 and proved to be very successful. Critics praised the girl's performance and even compared Kristen to her famous co-star in her youth. Interestingly enough, during the filming, Stewart grew more than three inches. She was shorter than Foster at the beginning of filming and taller than her at the end. This was followed by the role of the daughter of Sharon Stone and Dennis Quaid's character in the thriller Cold Creek Manor and the main role in the 2014 action comedy Catch That Kid. At the same time, the actress's filmography was replenished with the psychological drama Undertow and the film adaptation of Laurie Hulse Anderson's bestseller Speak. Everyone deserves a second chance. I mean, isn't that what Jesus said? Are you being smart with me? In it, Kristen Stewart played a difficult role. Her character was completely withdrawn after a severe psychological trauma and became an outcast in her class. In real life, Kristen was also a black sheep at school, albeit for a different reason. Classmates were openly jealous that Stewart was acting in a movie and avoided her, considering her arrogant and rude. The actress herself admitted that she was not rude, but just focused. It's difficult to combine school and filming. That's why in high school, the girl was transferred to homeschooling. Teachers sent her homework by email, and she solved math problems and wrote essays right on the set in between takes. Kristen's next work was the film Fierce People in 2005, on the set of which the girl began a teenage relationship with actor Anton Yelchin. However, it didn't last long. Soon, Stewart began dating Michael Angarano, her co-star in the film Speak. 
They were together for almost four years, during which Stewart starred in the movies Zathura, A Space Adventure, In the Lands of Women, The Cake Eaters, The Messengers, and Sean Penn's road movie Into the Wild. In the fall of 2007, writer Stephanie Meyer announced the upcoming film adaptation of her Twilight series of novels. Catherine Hardwick took over directing and immediately invited Kristen to the main role, since she highly praised her performance in the film Into the Wild. I'm not afraid of you. I'm only afraid of losing you. I feel like you're going to disappear. The search for Stewart's co-host was much more difficult, and it was decided to hold a casting right in the Hardwick's house. There, in her bedroom, Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson met. By the way, the actor had never heard about Twilight, but came to the audition just because of Kristen. He liked her role in the movie Into the Wild, too. The chemistry between the actors was obvious, and Stewart's awkward charm, her perpetual hesitation between bewilderment and determination, suited Bella Swan, a new variation of Damsel in Distress. However, not everyone appreciated Kristen's acting, considering it too emotionless. In many ways, the original book is to blame for it. As one of the critics put it, Stewart was forced to play a character with the charisma of a boiled potato. The actress herself has constantly stressed that she doesn't share Bella's values, and working on this character has become a real challenge for her. Mm, what exactly was that? You... You stopped the van. You pushed it away with your hand. Well, nobody's gonna believe you. In order to somehow understand her character, she watched all the movies about vampires that she could find and selected tiny details that could be useful for her. For the first part of the saga, which was released in 2008, Kristen received a fee of $2 million. Funnily enough, she had to hide her green eyes behind brown lenses for maximum resemblance to the book character. In the same year, the actress appeared in a number of other films, the comedy drama What Just Happened, the sci-fi action movie Jumper, and the melodrama The Yellow Handkerchief. Like that. I don't know how we could have gotten so lost. We have the river to the left at all times. Well, you don't read the map then. I'm not your maid. In January 2009, the comedy drama Adventureland was released, which told a story about the adventures of employees of a rundown amusement park. Meanwhile, the work on the second part of the Twilight Saga was underway, and sometime after the filming of New Moon began, the media learned that Kristen had broken up with Michael Angarano. This provoked rumors about her relationship with Robert Pattinson, which were soon confirmed. The actor who played Edward Cullen later admitted that he fell in love with his partner at the audition, but that he couldn't date her since the girl was underage. However, after her coming of age, the producers were only happy with this development because the Robston relationship, as their fans called them, only fueled interest in the franchise. The franchise and its actors were indeed extremely popular. Though Kristen noted that she was grateful that Twilight opened up career opportunities for her, she often complained about the paparazzi stalking her. In order to somehow protect her personal space, she decided to abandon social media. Over time, Kristen got used to the increased attention, but decided not to create official pages, at the same time hinting that she has secret sock puppet accounts. The Twilight Saga New Moon was released in November 2009, and the fun fact is that Bella's birthday scene was filmed on Kristen's 19th birthday. In the same year, the actress was awarded two MTV Awards, Best Female Performance and Best Kiss for a movie scene with Pattinson. Also, after the premiere, she was called to jury duty in Los Angeles and went to the hearings for three days, which ended with an acquittal. It was reported that the Twilight star was so happy about her contribution to the public life of the country that she asked to keep the juror badge and was allowed to. In between working on the Twilight movies, Kristen starred in the drama Welcome to the Rileys, where she played the role of a stripper. To accurately portray her character, who was on the path of self-destruction, the actress smoked non-stop, deprived herself of sleep, and ate mostly junk food, and also learned to pole dance. As a result, her body and legs were covered with bruises, but the pole dance scene was not included in the final edit of the film. By the way, the actor of the movie did not start filming for two years, waiting for Kristen to turn 18. The actress's next project was the biographical movie The Runaways, where she played the rock singer Joan Jett. It's my band. I wrote the song she just sang. You know, people always remember the singer. 
Before filming, Stewart worked closely with Joan herself to adopt her manner of speech and behavior, improve her stage skills, vocals, and guitar playing, eventually earning her praise. Although the guitar parts for the final soundtrack were recorded by Jet, who decided to do it for old time's sake, Kristen sang in the film herself. To play in The Runaways, the actress cut and dyed her hair, which added some headache to the makeup artists of the Twilight Saga Eclipse, so in the third part of the franchise, Stewart was wearing a wig. Right in the middle of filming, she received a certificate of secondary education. In 2011, the first part of Breaking Dawn was released, the final episode of the Twilight Saga for which Kristen received $12.5 million. Robert Pattinson received the same amount, which made them the fifth highest paid celebrity couple. Why can't you see how perfectly happy I am? Or was five seconds ago. You know, I'm sort of pissed off, actually. By the way, their characters in the film were married by a real priest. This, together with the real off-screen love of the bride and groom, made the wedding of Bella and Edward, according to the actors, seem like a real one. In real life, things seem to be heading toward a wedding, too. Kristen and Robert lived together for a while in a rented house in Bel Air, an upscale neighborhood of Los Angeles. According to rumors, the mansion on the shore of the lake cost the stars $22,500 a month. Pattinson then purchased a new love nest for $6.3 million. Many years later, Kristen admitted that she really wanted to marry Robert, even though she wasn't too traditional. In the spring of 2012, the film On the Road, based on the novel by Jack Kerouac, was released and nominated for the main award of the Cannes Film Festival. In it, Stewart played the most provocative character in her filmography. She appeared on the screen naked, and the storyline told about the intimate relationship of her character with two men. Before filming again, director Walter Salles forced the cast to live in a beatnik camp for three weeks, read literature about this generation, and listen to Kerouac's audio interview. Notably, the actress agreed to a salary of less than $200,000 after drastic budget cuts, as she loved the novel on which the film was based. However, the reduction in the fee did not greatly affect her well-being because Kristen took first place in the list of Hollywood's highest paid actresses of 2012 according to Forbes magazine. Her income from May 2011 to May 2012 was estimated at $34.5 million. In the summer of that year, moviegoers saw Kristen Stewart starring in the fantasy Snow White and the Huntsman. Who are you? Maybe you should have asked the Queen that. I don't trust you. I've given you my word. I still don't trust you. But you have a deal. It was reported that her fee was $9.5 million. The actress admitted that during the filming, she had to overcome the fear of horses, which she developed because of a fall at the age of nine. Then she suffered an elbow injury. However, she couldn't avoid injuries on the set, which caused production to be suspended several times. Kristen also accidentally hit Chris Hemsworth in the face in one of the takes and gave him a black eye. At the same time, a loud scandal involving Kristen broke out when she was photographed in the arms of the married director of the film, Rupert Sanders. The actress had no choice but to publicly admit infidelity, which, by the way, even Donald Trump angrily criticized. After that, Stewart and Pattinson drifted apart, but in the fall, they got back together. The girl even bought a house next door to her boyfriend, paying almost $2.2 million for a mansion in the Los Feliz neighborhood of Los Angeles. During the period of temporary reconciliation, Robston spent time in this Spanish-style mansion with four bedrooms, spacious living rooms, a swimming pool, and several outdoor terraces. The twists and turns of their personal life affected the promotional campaign of the fifth Twilight Saga film. In Breaking Dawn Part 2, which was released in November 2012, Bella became a vampire, which increased the physical workload of the actress. Now you know. Nobody's ever loved anybody as much as I love you. The work on the stunts captivated her so much that she lost her caution and broke her thumb in the first days of training. The fee for the film was $12.5 million, plus 7.5% of the box office, which allowed Kristen to enter the top three highest paid actresses in the world with a total income of $22 million. Later that year, Kristen Stewart voiced the drama K-11, directed by her mother, but the public was more interested in her relationship with Robert Pattinson. After another breakup and reconciliation, the relationship eventually ended as the stars of the Vampire franchise announced in early 2013. After that, Kristen moved to New York to try to forget Robert and start a new life. She also needed a professional reboot because the actress had to get rid of the Twilight aftertaste. While she was being awarded the Golden Raspberry Anti Award as Worst Actress, Kristen started working on several projects that were released in 2014. 
In January, moviegoers saw Stewart as a guard at a POW detention camp in the drama camp X-Ray, and in the spring, she played a movie star's assistant in the drama Clouds of Sils Maria. So intense, especially in the more physical scenes. That stare, he is like, I like him. Yeah, I kind of got it. I mean, as an actor, I really like him. After the premiere, critics seemed to have rediscovered the young actress, and Kristen became the first American to receive the French Caesar Award for Best Supporting Actress. It is worth special mentioning the subtle irony embedded in this film. Kristen's character, while talking about one starlet, seems to describe herself. She became famous thanks to an idiotic teenage blockbuster, she got dumped by a superstar boyfriend because of infidelity, and she is also not afraid to be herself. Since then, the actress has become an absolute favorite of the Cannes Film Festival, and every year they try to get her under various pretexts, either as an actress in a big premiere, as a director with her short film Come Swim, or as a member of the main jury. Then, the drama Still Alice was released, and Kristen Stewart's income for 2014 amounted to $12 million. Meanwhile, there have been changes in the personal life of the actress. She started dating assistant and visual effects producer Alicia Cargill. However, Kristen openly spoke about her bisexuality only a few years later, admitting that her agents advised her not to publicize it as it could have a negative impact on her career. But Stewart decided that she was not willing to hide her true self because of such people. The relationship with Alicia lasted until 2016, and it was rumored that they planned to get married, but the couple couldn't keep the relationship going and broke up. Kristen's career also involved, she starred in the crime drama Anesthesia, the comedy thriller American Ultra, and the dystopia Equals. Interestingly enough, in one of her scenes, Kristen read her own poems to her partner on the set. Stewart's income for 2015 was $12 million. In 2016, the actress's filmography was replenished with the drama Certain Women, the psychological thriller Personal Shopper, the war drama Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk, and Woody Allen's Cafe Society. I thought I'd come to Hollywood and live in one of these big houses with a swimming pool and hobnob with all the glamorous types. Mm -hmm. Go to openings. Mm -hmm. After breaking up with Alicia Cargill, Kristen started to appear in public with the French singer known as Soko. But their relationship only lasted a few months. After that, the girl was spotted in the arms of American singer Anne Erin Clark, but her next relationship with New Zealand model Stella Maxwell was much more serious. They lived together for about two years. However, they also parted for a short time when Kristen had a fling with stylist Sarah Dinkin. In 2018, Stewart appeared in the films Lizzie and J.T. Leroy, and she also caught people's attention by defiantly removing her shoes on the red carpet of the Cannes Film Festival. She did this to protest the absurd rule of the event which obliges women to wear high heels. By the way, this is not her first time on the carpet barefoot or on sneakers just because the heels are uncomfortable. A year later, Kristen starred in the political thriller Seaberg and a remake of Charlie's Angels. The latter was thrashed by critics and the audience, but the actress still said she was proud of the film because she and her crew had a great time. By the way, for this work, she received $7 million. We sling some bills, we get violent, fill a guitar today. Maybe a leopard, but either way, I am down Actually, to get wild. I might in the same year, the girl began dating screenwriter Dylan Meyer. Their relationship developed very rapidly, and two weeks after they met, Kristen confessed her love to Meyer. Almost immediately, she was ready to propose, but they got engaged only two years later. There were even rumors about a secret wedding when the girls were photographed with rings on their fingers, but Stewart herself says that the wedding is still only in the planning stage. In early 2020, Kristen appeared in the sci-fi blockbuster Underwater, and the subsequent forced reclusiveness and idleness didn't affect her in the best way. The girl admitted that being locked up, she smoked and drank all day, but then she woke up on April 9, her birthday, and was very ashamed of what she saw in the mirror. She had to stop smoking and drinking and then go back to work. Before Christmas, the actress appeared in the romantic comedy Happiest Season. In the same year, Stewart received the Actress of the Decade Award by the Hollywood Critics Association. In 2021, the film Spencer was released, in which Kristen Stewart played Lady Diana, and after undertaking a serious research of her character beforehand, if I ever do become queen, what will I be? Insane? It was not easy to portray a person adored by millions in front of the camera, and due to stress, Stewart began to have health issues to the point that her jaw was completely locked up for two weeks. But the efforts were not in vain. Lady Di's former bodyguard admitted that Kristen conveyed the manners of the princess better than others, and the jury even nominated the actress for the Golden Globe and Oscar. 
It's worth noting that Kristen's meticulous character study is combined with a carefree attitude to the script. The actress reads it only once, does not learn her lines in advance, and adapts to the situation on the set. This approach, she said, keeps reactions and perceptions fresh. Kristen Stewart's next work was the sci-fi thriller Crimes of the Future, which received the nomination for the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival. She doesn't abandon her ambitions to be a director because being just an actress is not enough for her, and she is working on a film adaptation of Lydia Yuknovich's book The Chronology of Water. This will be her feature-length debut, while now most of her works are music videos. Kristen Stewart's net worth is $70 million. Some of it comes from advertising contracts. She has worked with the fashion brand Balenciaga and has been the face of Chanel since 2013. The actress's garage includes such cars as Mini Cooper S, BMW X3, Porsche 911 S, Porsche Cayenne, Toyota T100, and Toyota Tacoma. The actress reportedly invests money in real estate. In addition to the Los Feliz mansion from her relationship with Robert Pattinson, she had a 6,000-square-foot house in Malibu. Kristen bought it in 2013 for $4.8 million and in 2020 put it up for sale for $9.5 million. The mansion, located on a private beach near the ocean, included five bedrooms, 4.5 bathrooms, and a separate guest house on the property. The furnishings of the house matched Stewart's style, deliberately casual and eclectic. In 2017, the girl paid $5.6 million for a loft in New York, and in 2021, she purchased another Mediterranean-style mansion on a hill in Los Feliz for $6 million. A stylish and cozy residence with a swimming pool is hidden behind a hedge. Inside, there are four bedrooms and bathrooms, a large living room, a dining room, a study, and a dressing room. Kristen always has dogs in her house because the actress loves animals very much. She also had a cat, Max, with whom she even bought designer collars from Karl Lagerfeld. But when her father got cancer, the girl gave him Max as moral support, and after recovery, she did not dare to take him back. Stewart once said that she was not going to become a regular Hollywood celebrity, and to this day remains true to her rebellious lifestyle. Some people like this approach, while others hate it. Which side are you on? Sweet. I'm out of here, man. I'm gonna take a week off. Party my ass off on a Thai beach. If you like the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.